A fairly bleak and slightly scruffy but fine village in the south of England hides something extraordinary. From the optimistically large car park you walk round to traverse a slightly treacherous, especially after it's been raining, chalk ridge. Then you see a church-like angular facade that offers a tantalising glimpse of what is to come. A hollowed out chalky tunnel, garishly lit in red and green lights, disappears into an eerie blackness just out of sight. Welcome to the infamous Hellfire Caves in the village of West Wickham in Buckinghamshire. There are plenty of rumours and legends around the caves that have swirled since they were first dug from the chalk bedrock between 1748 and 1752. So let's submerge into the depths of the earth and history itself as we explore the Hellfire Caves. Around a hundred men were employed in excavating the caves under the orders of the landowner, Sir Francis Dashwood, the 11th Baron Le Dispenser. They were mainly farm workers who had no work as a result of a succession of harvest failures in 1748, 49 and 50. They were paid a shilling a day, which was apparently sufficient to support a family at the time. The chalk from the caves was used to build a new main road from West Wickham to High Wickham, three miles away. This road was finished in 1752 and an obelisk was erected to record the event. It still stands at the junction of the Oxford and Aylesbury roads. But what were the caves actually used for? Well, that is somewhat murky. This was an era of bizarre clubs headed by young aristocrats who would go on so-called grand tours to significant historical locations like Athens, Rome, Paris and Florence. They were heavily influenced by classical Greek antiquity and exotic cultures like the Ottoman Empire, ancient Egypt and Persia. After 1763, the caves were said to have been used for meetings of a secret society headed by Sir Francis Dashwood, called the Knights of St Francis of Wickham. This organisation, Think an Early Bilderberg Meets Bullingdon, was later known as the Hellfire Club. It originally met at Medmendham Abbey and attracted wealthy and influential people. More on that later. And Dashwood himself was an important figure, serving as Chancellor of the Exchequer from 1762 to 1763. As well as a meeting place, it seems likely that Dashwood used the caves for some of the lavish parties which he gave his friends. They are a quarter of a mile long and followed a most unusual shape, which is thought to have been copied from some ancient subterranean Greek temple. At their deepest, the caves are 300 feet beneath the church and mausoleum at St Lawrence's Church on the hill above them, as above, so below, believed to be a representation of heaven and hell. Now, one of the alleged activities of this group of rakes and upper-class oddballs who made up the Knights of St Francis of Wickham fell some way short of the code of chivalry. They were said to have hired, um, how shall I put this to maintain the monetizational and algorithmic integrity of this video, ladies of the night, evening women, Femme de la Nuit. Anyway, these um, practitioners of the oldest profession were said to have dressed as nuns in debauched episodes in the expansive central chamber. This was known as the Banqueting Hall. In it, they were surrounded by strange carvings of skulls, statues of female goddess figures from classical Greece, and even a recreation of the river Styx from Greek mythology, the river to the underworld. Members of the Hellfire Club wore white flowing robes and adopted religious titles like Abbot. They wore masks and a badge with the club's motto, Libertati Amicatiae Sac, Sacred to Liberty and Friendship. Although another motto would also be attributed to the club, Fais ce que tu voudrais, Do what thou wilt, a phrase that would later be adopted by the infamous occultist Elise de Crowley. No one really knows exactly what took place at these meetings, which were kept highly secret, but they could have included pagan practices, occult rituals and even black magic and devil worship. The official guidebook rather glosses over some of the more lurid tales of debauchery, but the author, one Sir Francis Dashwood, 11th Baronet of West Wickham, a descendant of the cave's builder, is either sticking scrupulously to the verifiable facts, or perhaps seeking to defend the family name. It makes for an interesting read nonetheless. So who was a party to the meetings at the caves? 
This again is open to interpretation, but is likely to have included the artist William Hogarth, radical journalist John Wilkes, John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich, the judge and antiquarian Robert Vansittart, and perhaps most significantly, considering what happened in 1776, US founding father, pioneer of electrical science and serial philanderer Benjamin Franklin. Franklin was a close associate of Dashwood, and together, when relations between the American colonies and the home government deteriorated, they endeavoured to bring about a reconciliation. Franklin, who visited the caves on a number of occasions, had hoped that America would develop within the British Empire, and by its growth become the centre of the empire, without struggle or bloody revolution. In 1770, the pair drew up a plan of reconciliation as an attempt to find a basis for compromise which might avert any open conflict towards independence. The plan was ultimately unsuccessful, and the rest, as they say, is history. But was the seed of the independence movement born in the Hellfire Club meetings and banquets in these caves? As well as being a haunt for intoxicated blue-blooded yahoos, this would not be a creepy cave complex without a few ghost stories. In fact, one of the alleged apparitions was said to have been a deceased aforementioned blue-blooded yahoo. The ethereal spectre of Paul Whitehead, who died in 1774, is said to stalk the chiselled-out depths of West Wickham. Whitehead was the steward of the notorious Hellfire Club. On his death, the loyal retainer left £50 to Sir Francis Dashwood for the purchase of an urn to be deposited in the Dashwood Mausoleum, which sits atop the hill close to the caves, so that his heart could be placed inside and remain with the Dashwoods forever. In 1829, an Australian soldier stole his heart, in a literal rather than romantic way, and the urn was then placed in the caves for safekeeping. Paul Whitehead's ghost is reported to still haunt the caves, searching for his heart. Another restless spirit, known as the White Lady, is said to accompany Whitehead in the labyrinthine warren of tunnels. Tradition holds that Suki was a servant girl in the 19th century who worked at the Georgian Dragon, a tavern in West Wickham village. She rejected the advances of three local village boys as she had her sights set on becoming the bride of an aristocrat. One day a wealthy young man paid a visit to the inn and Suki, seeing him as her prospective bridegroom, set about ensnaring him. This angered the local boys who hatched a plan to teach her a lesson. They sent her a letter purported to come from her suitor, informing her that he wished to elope with her and asked her to meet him at the caves in her wedding gown. She arrived at the caves only to find the three spurned lads. It was then that the prank turned to tragedy. Stones were thrown in temper, knocking her unconscious, and she later passed away. An apparition of a lady in white is said to have been seen within the caves ever since. And, as fascinating as the rumoured behaviour of the guests and the ghosts is, it is possible that these caves played a role in changing the history of the world. Powerful men meeting in secret to map out a new future to their advantage? Surely not. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share and most importantly subscribe. And you can also support the channel on Subscribestar via the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.